Okay, so I've op I've loaded up Blender, I've installed it, I've loaded it up, and this is what it looks like. And uh, right, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click somewhere outside this dark grey box here onto a mid grey box and here's a 3D view. We don't want the 3D view, uh, do we? We're not doing 3D editing, we're doing video editing. So um, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this little cube here and I'm going to select the video sequence editor and now the whole pan this whole panel has changed into video sequence editor. This sort of grey grid is where we're going to add the actual video clips. And so they'll appear as rectangles here. I'll show you one, in fact. Um, so I'm going to add movie, desktop, um, and there it is. There's a video. That's, that's the video and that's the audio, but we can't actually see it. The next thing to do is this button here. You see, that's just the channels. That's just the video on their own, and this one that we're going to select means we can actually see a preview of the video at the top of the screen alongside these uh, channels at the bottom. So, but that's really tiny, it's like postage stamp size. Um, so I'm going to drag that down a bit, and I'm going to roll the middle mouse, I'm going to go over here and roll the middle mouse button to zoom that in. Um, this is well, this is uh, not that unusual. You can on all of these windows you can roll the middle mouse button to zoom in and you can hold the middle mouse button and move around to move ar move move around. And also you can use these sliders here and you can use the ends of them to zoom in and out or the middle of them to do it and I'm going to use the end of it to zoom in a bit here. So now we're able to see those two strips there and we're able to see that it's a couple of puppets we have on our example thing. So, right, we're also there's a uh, bit that's missing from this that I find incredibly useful. If you look for this little plus up here, and press this plus, we now get an extra panel pop-up, which is stuff to do with the video or, edi or audio clip of that amateur image or effect. Basically, the object down here that you've selected. So, Right, that's good, but I doesn't need quite that much space. I'm going to sort of drag it to around there, and now I'm going to take this line here and drag it out, and we can start looking at these panels here and explain what these are. Now this top one here, that's a list of all the objects in the 3D scene. We've got uh, so far we've got a camera, a cube, and a lamp, and a world and render laser. We don't we don't we don't need to know about that. That's not what we're doing. We're not doing 3D editing at all. We're doing video editing. So what I'm going to do is you see these little um, diagonally stripy lines. I'm going to select those and drag upwards, and you can see that arrow there. We could make it go downwards, but we want to make it go upwards. And you see that now we've sort of got rid of that panel, and this one, this panel here, has filled its space. So, I mean, if you accidentally drag that down, if I just quickly put that back, um, if you if you did that and dragged it down, what we'd have to do is find this icon here, and if we selected that and go back to go to properties because this is this is the properties panel we've now actually got three panels on the screen this one here is the video sequencer panel this one here is the properties panel and there's the timeline panel here um, so uh, well this one a lot of this we're not going to use but there are a few things that are incredibly incredibly important we've got render buttons so we can render a single frame we can render the animation which is going to be the video that's quite useful for video editing it allows you to actually export videos and we can export just the audio on its own which could be useful you know um so what else we've got we've got dimensions now there's a lot of presets there so there's uh, 720p and 1080p. I think the best idea is to get the uh, the um, render size to be the same as the video we're using. I happen to know that this is 1080p, so I'm going to leave that there. But it also, at the moment, it only renders at 50% of 1080p. So 1080p is 
1920 by 1080. So it's going to do. Oh, what is this? This is where I realise that my mental arithmetic is rather lat lacking. But whatever half. Whatever half of 1920 is by, oh, I can do this one. This is 540, so 540 pixels high by half of that, right? But if that's set at 50 percent, it does it at half. So you can set it at 8 percent if you want to make a really minuscule video. Or you'll probably want to set it at 100 percent. You can, by typing it in, set it higher than 100 percent, so it automatically doubles both of those. But you know, let's. Uh, I mean, that's handy if you want to do like a quick preview version of the video um, rather than the final thing so but you don't want to have to type in the resolution you can just use that to set different things we've also got the start frame and the end frame we can actually sort of we've also got these down here so start frame and end frame this video starts on frame one and ends on frame 250 and we can kind of see there's on this timeline here there's an end and an end there so we don't actually go to the end of the strip. We can type in a later end frame, like 300, and we can see that that's now gone a little bit further than that. And yeah, that ends there. Oh yeah, that's on there. That's the uh, rolling the middle mouse button to zoom in and out and holding it down to move again. That is at least consistent. And the frame rate. Oh yes, this is this is one of the most important buttons we got here. The frame rate. Um, you don't want right. It wants to be at the same frame rate as the video you're using. Otherwise, you see the audio and video strips don't end at the same time. There, that's a bit weird. That is, if they if I, they're the same video, they should end the same. They should start the same and end the same. But but if we actually change it to 25 frames a second, I happen to know that my camera picks up video at 25 frames a second then you see that now they end on the same frame and they've gone back in time so yay that sorted that one out that's yes um uh most of the world uses pal uh europe um etc uh, uses pal however some countries use 30 frames a second america and the top right part of South America and Japan use NTSC format, which runs at 30 frames a second. Um, but of course, I mean, you might be using, in this day and age, you may well be using video that was shot in America that you're editing. So even it might be in, you might be using video of a completely different frame rate. And now gamers seem to be really fond of running at 60 frames a second as well. So that's an option. Or you could even run at 12 frames a second and make it like a stop motion animation. Um, which even high quality stuff generally is actually played at 12 frames a second unless things are moving fast. Anyway, enough of my random uh, discussion about frame weights in which I get slightly distracted. Okay, anti, right, most of these stuff you don't need to bother about, so I'm going to use, click these little triangles and it folds up. The next thing I'm actually going to worry about, and because I am going to worry about it. I'm going to select these these sort of what are those eight dots? I'm going to select those and drag them up there next to the last thing I was worrying about. And this is the output. So we get to say when we export video from here, this is the file format, etc., etc. That it is. And the first thing is where we're going to save it. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to type in slash slash render one underscore right so okay what does that all mean slash slash means it exports the file in the same folder as the blender file the editing the video editing file uh, and that just means that i don't end up with stuff all over my hard drive in really ex 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 random places like the temporary folder where it wants to put everything uh, render is just a random word that could be anything you like. One means like I may well have different versions of this. I'll render version one, and then a few days later I'll render version two, etc., etc. The underscore right when Blender renders a video, um, it puts numbers at the end of the file name. So at the moment we're going from frame one to frame three hundred. Oh, we could look at it there from frame one to th frame frame three hundred. 
And so what it will do is it will actually name the file render1 underscore 001 dash 300 and because it adds the first frame and the last frame to the end of the file name. Except actually, at the moment, it's set to render as a series of PNG files, um, which are image files. So at the moment it will render a series of single frames of uh, images. Great if you want to render high quality 3D animation. Not really so good for video editing. We kind of want to export videos from video editing. So actually, if it's rendering a PNG, it'll call it render1.0000 for the first for, oh, 0001 for the first frame, because first frame's number one, 0002, etc. So that will be a whole series of images with um, numbers for them. So right, what we want to do, we want to select my personal favourite file format for video editing exporting, and this is one that I highly recommend, is H264. The actual H264. H dot numbers is the way I remember it. I don't remember that it's 264. So, right, we've selected that. We want it to be RGB, RGB colour. And now we're going to have a look at encoding. And uh, this is... I've personally... This is um, how we select more details on how the video is exported. AVI is probably fine. I generally find that QuickTime is able to be used on more computers than any other option here, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, Bitrate, and you could leave that where it is. I mean, uh, 6,000 bitrate, that's, that's perfectly fine for most use, but if you want a super high quality video, which I generally do, I'm going to change it to 32000, return, or enter, and I'm going to change the maximum to 64000. So now I'm able to, that's for like a super high quality video, I mean about, about five minutes of that would be a gig. So it's, uh, but it's for like, if you want to do some super high quality video then that's the way to do it. And the last thing is audio. Uh, so many times I've gone to export it a video and wasted about half an hour and it's come out without sound. So audio codec, that's another thing we're going to set up right now and we're going to set it up to PCM which is uncompressed audio. Again, I'm going with super high quality here. MP3 is fine, but I'm going with the high quality version here. And the bit rate, uh, 192 ain't good enough. We're going to go with 320. Now, the bit rate does actually go up to 384. Um, but if you export to, for Windows and then you load a video file with a bit with an audio bit rate PCM 384 it doesn't play the audio and the video in time with each other so by a certain amount of experimentation i found that 320 works better so we're setting that to 320 and now we've dealt with this this panel here we're going to do this one which is the timeline we don't need well, we don't need very much of this, to be honest. I mean, you can see there, it's another timeline. We've got two timelines here going at once, which seems a bit superfluous. We've got buttons here for playing, going to the first frame, going to the end frame, playing it. Uh, so that's them. But what we need, the one thing that we, we've also got a start frame and end frame, which we can set there, and that's easy to find. But the most important thing here is this pop-up menu here. Right, it's no sync here. We want AV sync, and AV sync means it plays the audio and the video in time with each other. So that must absolutely be set to AV sync. And finally, well, actually, I'm just going to delete these first, which I'm going to do R. Ah, first real blender weirdness you have to deal with here you right click to select so i'm going to select that and press delete on the keyboard erase strips press these delete on the keyboard erase strips so we've and what i want to do is i want next time i load up blender everything to be set like this so i'm going to go to file and i'm going to go to save startup file and yeah okay save startup file Click that again, and now, when I load up Blender again, it should look exactly like this. Okay, see you soon.